The concept of purity. A pure substance is one which contains only one type of substance. That could be an element or a molecule. For example, pure oxygen, if I could zoom in and have a look at the uh, atoms and molecules that make it up, I would only see oxygen atoms. Pure water, if I was to zoom in and have a look, the only atoms I would see would be hydrogen and oxygen bonded into water molecules. So a pure substance contains only one type of molecule or atom. If there is something else in there, then we say that it is impure and the unwanted materials are known as impurities. So how can we tell if something is impure or pure? Well, there is a simple laboratory test. What we can do is we can take a solid sample of the substance, or if that's not practical, start with a liquid sample, and we measure it, uh, its temperature while supplying a constant supply of heat. So we will heat it up, measure its temperature every 30 seconds, minute, two minutes, and then we will plot the results on a graph. If you have a pure substance, you end up with a graph that is shaped like this. If you have an impure substance, these lines here will not be nice, sharp, horizontal lines. If you know the substance that you are working with, you can also check their melting and boiling points. So for example, in this substance here, uh, we start with a solid sample at this time, and we start to heat it up and measure its temperature. But at point A, and between point A and point B, the substance is a solid. However, we don't stop adding heat. We're still adding heat, but notice the temperature does not increase. That's because the energy from the heat is now going to overcoming the intermolecular bonds. So between point B and point C, the substance is melting. Once it reaches point C, those intermolecular bonds have been broken and it is now a liquid. Between point C and D, the substance is a liquid. Same goes for point D. Once we hit point D, the temperature doesn't increase, but we're still adding heat because the heat energy is now going in to boiling the substance. At point E, the substance is now a gas. You can add more and more energy and there's no state of matter in chemistry above a gas, so it's just going to stay a gas, get hotter, get more energy, have the particles move around more. But we can use graphs like this to determine melting and boiling point. All you do is draw a nice line from the melting point to this axis here, and this will be the temperature at which the substance melts. Same goes for the boiling point. This will be the boiling point. If you have a known substance such as water, you would expect this to be zero degrees Celsius and this to be 100 degrees Celsius. If those numbers are different, you know you've got impurities. And in fact, impurities change the boiling and melting point of a substance in predictable ways. If you have an impurity, the boiling point raises and the melting point lowers. So if you have a uh, sample of water and you find that it melts at negative two degrees Celsius and boils at 101 degrees Celsius, you know that there are impurities. If you don't know the boiling and melting point of a substance, you can use this to determine it. And also, if these are not nice lines, if it's more of a curve, you know that you have impurities because the different substances in the mixture will boil and melt at different temperatures.